Whenever I create these videos, I find myself creating a distinction in the videos between short-term effects and long-term effects of ingredients. Many ingredients have a short-term acute effect, like stimulants, cre uh, caffeine for one, you should feel immediately, uh, and the effects are short-term, they're short-lived. Then other ingredients, like say, creatine or beta alanine will have long-term effects where over time the uh, benefits are built up or it takes longer time to saturate in the blood uh, and there's not very much crossover between the two uh, but to, in today's case we do uh, have one ingredient that is actually studied in both long, uh, short term and now in the long term. Today I'm going to talk about Velocitol, specifically a recent study that came out on the long-term effects of Velocitol and how it may work to help athletes. Welcome to Price Plow. I do want to start off this video and say that we do have a business affiliate relationship with Nutrition 21. Last year when I uh, produced a whole bunch of Supply Side West content, uh, they flew me out for the weekend. Uh, we've worked with them, we've helped consult them, we've helped uh, companies bring them in or help you know facilitate discussions. Uh, we don't have business affiliate relationships with everything that we talk about, but Nutrition 21 is one of the companies that we do have a relationship, so I want to make sure that is transparent and out there. In any case, today I'm going to be talking about a study and data, very little anecdote, if any here, I don't think I'm going to offer any of my personal uh, experiences with Velocitol and just kind of talk about the data that recently came out. Researchers at the Center for Applied Sciences in Ohio recently did a study on Velocitol. These are the same researchers that did the original study on six grams of whey protein with two grams of Velocitol. Velocitol is uh, an ingredient that increases muscle protein synthesis response to whey protein or possibly other ingredients some are theorizing. Uh, it's still a little bit unknown exactly how it works uh, specifically, but amylopectin and chromium are the basic makeup of this ingredient basically kind of increasing your insulin response and creating a better response to the whey protein that you're putting in your body. Previously, the only data that we had on it was showing that when taking in a small amount of whey protein, Velocitol increased the amount of muscle protein synthesis that is increased from in taking that protein. Now, there were uh, subsequent, subsequent studies showing that larger amount of whey protein with that did not have the same you know, increase percentage-wise, uh, but we obviously uh, sometimes see diminished returns with all sorts of different ingredients. Now, the study that recently came out was breaking down or trying to show what happens when you take Velocitol for a long period of time and at zero and zero weeks and multiple intervals past there, they studied things like uh, squat power, squat RTF, uh, jump power, jump height, things of that nature alongside weight, body composition, and all of that stuff. So the study had three groups, one being 15 grams of whey protein isolate with two grams of Velocitol, two being whey protein isolate, 15 grams on its own, and three being 30 grams of whey protein. So these three groups showed three different types of intakes. Everything else was kept the same or as close as possible. Obviously these studies do, do have other factors like genetics, uh, sleep, diet, training, but they tried to keep things as generally controlled as possible. And these 35 men were studied at zero, four, and eight weeks. So obviously all participants here gained strength and size and, uh, you know, power from, from this. It, it, it'd be hard to train for eight weeks uh, under these kinds of circumstances, being controlled, and not get better. That being said, the group that had 15 grams of protein with the two grams of Velocitol actually outperformed the 15 grams on its own, which probably is pretty obvious, as well as the 30 grams of whey protein isolate on its own in all of these categories. The active group saw an increase in endurance with their squats re uh, reps to failure, as well as their squats power overall. Vertical jump power and height were increased over the other groups as well. And lastly, the net protein balance for the body was significantly increased for that group more than the other groups as well. So previously there was a lot of questions about how exactly Velocitol manages all of these things, and the new, the the theory of all of this is that Velocitol helps early adaptation with whole protein balance. Whole protein balance is basically the difference between uh, muscle protein breakdown and muscle protein synthesis. So uh, a really great friend of ours and a frequent on our podcast is John Meadows, an IFBB pro, an incredible coach, and an owner of a wonderful supplement uh, line called Granite Supplements. Now, the, uh, his analogy is that training is like digging a ditch and nutrition, supplementation, diet, all of that stuff, recovery, is filling that ditch back in. That's muscle protein synthesis. The breaking down is muscle protein breakdown. So you're going to break down your muscles during workouts. It's just how it works. 
works. You're gonna be creating micro tears in the muscles, creating damage, inflammation, all that stuff. That needs to be done in a certain amount, but it also needs, needs to be done in a recoverable amount. So for a lot of people, you are able to train past the amount that you're able to recover from. A constant theory that I've had is that it's a lot less about how far you dig that ditch and how well you can fill that ditch back in. So something like Velocitol here is going to help your body adapt to these breakdowns of muscle proteins and help create new muscle protein through muscle protein synthesis earlier on in these these processes. So the thought process would be that if you look at the, you know, the, the bar graph of power, recovery, muscle, pro muscle protein synthesis, uh, all of these uh, variables that were measured, uh, the other groups that, that did not have velocitol or had more whey protein without velocitol would have eventually created, would eventually reach those points. But the point here being that this group reached them quicker because their whole protein balance was much more positive. They were recovering much more efficiently. So what does this mean for your normal athlete? Well, CrossFit athletes that are training multiple times a day or in incredibly high intensities are really, um, benefit from this very highly. Uh, if you are a bodybuilder and you're training multiple times a week, you're hitting muscle, uh, the same muscle group multiple times a week, this is going to benefit for you so you can get it back in the gym and train again. Uh, if you are a power lifter and you are training power days or rep days, speed days, and you, you feel like one day is hindering your performance and the next, this is going to help you out. Anyone who needs to be recovering from heavy training, hard training is going to benefit from this. It will improve your body composition. So physique athletes like bodybuilders, uh, bikini athletes, all those kinds of athletes are going to benefit uh, physically. Strength athletes, endurance athletes are all going to benefit because their performance is going to increase from this. So across the board, there is a lot more data to come. There's a second half of the study that will be uh, showing uh, biomarkers of safety uh, and, and all sorts of other stuff that will be released soon. And we'll be covering that when that comes out. But for now, the data is pretty compelling. Obviously, one thing that's beautiful about science is it's constantly changing, right? Arginine and uh, <coughs> glutamine used to be huge deals in the cell industry. They are now, uh, you know, changed where only certain reasons they can be used for uh, efficaciously. And this is another scenario of that. Velocitol used to be looked at in the acute, but now there's data to show that we should look at it in a long-term supplementation as well. So guys, I just wanted to get on here, do a quick video on this new data to come out. This is just a minor video. Don't wanna go on for too long, but I hope this helps you understand the data a little bit better. I wanna do some more studies like this breaking, I wanna do more videos like this breaking down recent studies for you guys. So let me know if this helped you out better. If this is the kind of content that you would appreciate because you don't have time to read studies. I hope this was helpful and as always, if you have any questions about Nutrition 21, you can go to pricewell.com slash Nutrition 21, or you can ask a question below. I'd love to talk about all of this stuff with you. If you made this part of the video, I really do appreciate it. This content is a lot of fun to make, but it is also a lot of work. So as always, guys, thank you so much, and have a great day. Welcome to Pricewell.